Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're at. Welcome to Collider Dailies. I'm John Algett, and today I'm joined by Mr. Nate Richard. Nate, hello. How you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Glad to have you on the show. Uh, you're somebody who you were on like a short list of people that I wanted to bring on at some point, uh, and so I'm glad to I'm glad to finally have the opportunity to have you on here. Have you yeah. helping me out with this? Uh, today we are going to be talking about about uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, getting a little bit of a tease. Kit Harrington had some comments about his future in the MCU. But first, we're going to start things off where you would kind of expect all of us to be starting off, and that is with the trailer for Joker, Fu Fully Adieu. I'm sure I butchered that. I, I don't speak French. Uh, or as I like to call it, Joker 2, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, so yeah, we got a trailer for it. It was a bit of a teaser trailer, but it gave us a pretty decent look. Nate. What are your feelings on the trailer? Just give me your like real quick general thoughts. I like the trailer. I don't know how the movie is going to turn out, but I am a huge Lady Gaga fan. So just anytime I see her on screen, I'm going to be instantly excited. But I liked the use of like what the world needs now is love. I'm glad they didn't just use like another like generic song. Like they didn't use the Steve Miller band song for Joker. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. It here's the thing. It looks like it looks like Joker. Um, it it seems to be striking roughly the same tone as the first film, which honestly kind of surprised me a little bit because one thing that we do know about this film that the trailer I felt like downplayed is the fact that it is a it's a musical and not just a musical. It's a jukebox musical, uh, which again it's just continuing Hollywood's trend of hiding hiding musicals for whatever reason uh but yeah what are your thoughts on it actually being a musical because this is something that you know obviously the first one wasn't a musical so moving into that territory how what are, what are your thoughts on it and how do you think it's going to affect the movie overall it's definitely a pivot i mean i like the first joker movie but it's not something i think i'd ever want to watch again and making it a musical is something that's instantly gonna make me like a lot more interested because I already know it's going to alienate even, like, the people who love that first movie. Like, I have friends who I'm like, oh, you know, like, Joker 2 is coming. They're like, I don't want to see a musical. And I'm like, <laughs> I do. That's what makes me, like, excited. Yeah, I kind of wish it wasn't, like, a jukebox musical. Because you, the first movie wasn't the most original movie on the planet. And I, I feel like the song choices aren't going to be, like, outstanding. But already from, like, the trailer where they're dancing on the Arkham Hotel rooftop. I thought that was like really cool. So I'm I'm excited to see how the dancing goes. And since like dancing played such a big role in the original, it does kind of make sense. Yeah, and I mean like I feel like it's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point that the musical's moments will be probably something in his head um okay. or sort of this shared delusion with Harley. Uh so I'm not, I'm kind of with you. I'm not a, a, so big on it being a jukebox musical. I've never really, really liked jukebox musicals. For me, the appeal of a musical is hearing new songs or hearing yeah. something new. And the idea of like a, I don't know, like weirdly like dark and gothic Joker movie kind of like would be interesting to me or Joker musical would be interesting to me. But I mean, eh, I'm going to watch it. Uh, my, I, I'm not like super stoked for it. To be honest with you, the first movie was a movie that I watched and I enjoyed, and then I never watched it again, and I've never had any inclination to rewatch it. Um, but it'll it'll probably be a very well made film. It'll probably be a very competently put together film. Uh, so you mentioned that you're a big Lady Gaga fan. So let's actually talk about uh, let's actually talk about Lady Gaga as Harley and sort of where we think this that things might go with that. So this this movie, the trailer seems to be presenting us with a Harley that is a departure from the normal Harley origin that we normally get. Because normally in the comics and in the animated series, uh, Harley and Quinzel was actually his uh, therapist, his psychiatrist, who was helping him out while he was in Arkham. And now it seems like she herself is a patient. Uh, what are you thinking about this about this rendition of Harley? Do you like it? Are you excited to see it? even outside of just the Lady Gaga connection? I mean, 
it, it kind of makes sense because the first movie didn't draw like it kind of borrowed a lot from like the killing joke but like arthur fleck was his own original character so yeah. i mean just making her another inmate at arkham makes sense and it also doesn't mean that maybe she was previously a therapist and she just went mad from spending so much time in arkham i i do like her look i it definitely is fitting with uh what walking is doing and it it's definitely a big departure from like the margot robbie in any of the suicide squad movies i guess they kind of kept did she have tattoos this or is that just face paint? i'm trying to i'm i think it was all just like face and body paint i don't think like off the top of my head i don't think i saw any tattoos if i did maybe i just didn't notice yeah but, but yeah. yeah it 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 certainly looks like it's going to be a good time and i am very curious to see how lady gaga is going to where she's going to take the character because as you mentioned margot robbie had her version of the character which did i felt tonally stuck pretty close to what we're used to seeing with harley and so I'm I'm very excited by the concept that this might be a completely different sort of take on the character and something a lot more unique, uh, which, you know, is going to be interesting, especially because there is just so much of a uh, sort of an expectation on what you see from Harley normally. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at some of the comments and see it's uh, see what some people are saying. Uh, Jeremy Miller here says it's fascinating hearing how Gaga got cast since Todd was a producer on star is born. Uh, yeah. Connections, man. It's all about networking. You got to know people. That's how this, that's how this works in this business. Uh, Mike Joyce says they had me at lady Gaga musical. Agreed. You're probably, there's probably a lot of people who are <laughs> in that same boat. It's probably a lot of people who are excited just for that. sheer point. Uh, Maggie's in the comments, apparently saying Nate, the great. Yay. Glad, glad to have you on. So that's exciting. Uh, hmm. uh, oops. Oh, all right. That's the next one I want to pull up. Curious to find out how the production budget alone went from 60 to 70 million on the first movie to 200 million for this sequel. Yeah. Bigger and maybe better. I don't know. It's Hollywood's budgets are ballooning at kind of a, kind of a scary rate. And I, I wish that they would go the other direction because yeah. it's causing more problems than it's, you know, really helping anything. But I don't know. What do you, what are your thoughts on it having such a, such a ballooned budget? I mean, I expected it to go over a hundred million just because the first movie made a billion dollars. It's the highest grossing R rated movie, but it, it's still kind of just confounding that it's 200 million. I guess unless like Walking Phoenix, which he probably did, got like a massive payday. I feel like that will probably put like a large dent in that kind of budget. And I think Lady Gaga probably also pretty expensive to get. And I think the sets for the musical numbers, I mean, they look pretty like extravagant. Yeah, it definitely does seem like production value wise it was there's definitely an increase in there so oh, yeah i can i can see where the budget might be it does seem a little absurd for it to be that high yeah. uh and one final one before we move on to our next topic i wonder if they'll dance to bad romance I would love i'm that. gonna guess not but that would be funny uh i i given the time frame that these movies seem to be set in or the general vibe. I don't know if they, I don't know if the, was the first one actually set in the seventies or it's just supposed to give off the feeling of the seventies. I think it was 81 actually. Might or have said, like, close to eighties or whatever, but either way, I don't think that the, the song doesn't work out timeline wise. Yeah. So is what it is. Uh, anyways, let's move on to our second topic for today, which is Kit Harrington had a couple of things to say about uh his part in the mcu and sort of where he's sitting obviously he appeared at the end of the or uh, he appeared during the internals not at the end but during the internals as dane whitman and at the end of the internals he we saw him picking up the sword and looking like he was going to be becoming black knight before he was interrupted by a mysterious voice that was totally maybe possibly blade uh and uh but we haven't seen him since pretty much like any of the Eternals, actually. The fact that that movie has had absolutely no impact on the MCU so far might be one of the bigger problems, I think, with the MCU. Uh, but anyways, uh, he was recently asked 
about the situation with the MCU and when we could kind of expect to see him. And he said this, quote, I don't know, though. The honest answer is nothing's in the works at the moment. If they decide to use the character in something or as a solo thing, I'd be excited by it. But I don't think it's planned at the moment. So it sounded like we don't know if we're ever going to get to see Dane Whitman ever again. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? What's your take? How are you feeling? I mean, I didn't even mind Eternals. Like, I really liked it more than, you know, some people. But I, I feel like it's kind of just a waste of Kit Harrington. I mean, he was one of the biggest stars on Game of Thrones. Then you get him, like, right as that show ended, you get him in, like, a big, like, coveted superhero role. And just to kind of just waste him feels like a missed opportunity. But at the same time, I don't think we're going to see anybody in the Eternals return or reprise their roles as much as, like, the Harry Styles stands want to see him return as, was it Star Fox? I don't know yeah. his uh, honestly, that is a character given, given his comic history, that's a character that I didn't want to see come back anyways, uh, because it's just kind of, it's just a gross character. Uh, but black Knight really is a character that they set up to seem like he was going to be doing some stuff and to hear that we, that even he doesn't know if he's showing up again is really concerning as all in the game says should have had blade movie already with a black knight cameo yeah we're gonna be getting that blade movie that would be the logical place for him to show up and it sounded like he doesn't know if that's gonna happening unless he's pulling an andrew garfield and he's uh lying to us and he's already filmed a bunch of stuff uh but i don't i don't quite get why they seem to be burying the eternal so much because the eternals wasn't a bad movie it uh -huh. didn't it didn't like bomb colossally it just maybe didn't perform as well as they wanted but it but they haven't referenced it at all as far as i remember they haven't outside of like some small like easter eggy headlines in like uh i think there was a she there was a headline in she hulk yeah. that mentioned something about something that happened outside of that there hasn't been there there hasn't been anything and it's just it's really unfortunate because it wasn't yeah. a bad movie no and i'm i'm still like puzzled by like how that the reception that movie got because I, it's far from the worst mcu movie and as much as the movie i thought was it was just fine i still liked a lot of those characters i i definitely would would have been interested to see black knight and i hope he returns and blade but with the amount of like changes that blade has like gone through yeah. i i still don't feel fully confident that that movie is going to happen either i almost feel like the eternals I think that that movie was caught during this weird time frame post end game where half of the audience was like burnt out on superhero stuff. So they didn't receive anything well. And the other half of the audience, like if it wasn't on the same level as end game, it was trash. So it, because there were, there were a few films post end game where it, where it just seemed like reception cooled down a lot on the MCU um, and I think that Eternals just kind of took the brunt of that, unfortunately. But it does just seem odd that they're just they're burying it so hard. Uh, uh, maybe it maybe it is a tonal thing, as Mike Joyce points out here. It's more of a sci-fi movie than a superhero movie. It could just be that it was just a little bit too out of left field from what we're used to with the MCU. We didn't have like very many MCU connections at all outside of small little dialogue pieces. So maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. Yeah, because I, but I also think of like the first Guardians of the Galaxy and how that movie, no one knew who they were before, you know, that the 2014 movie came out and then it just like broke huge and it made, you know. Yeah, but that, that film also benefited from being like smack dab in the middle of That's peak true. MCU, I think. Like, I think yeah. that if they tried to do Guardians of the Galaxy today, I don't know if it would be nearly as well received. Probably not. I think people would be far more hesitant about it than anything else. Um, all in the game here is saying half expected Blade to show up at the end of Werewolf by Night and recruit him and Elsa Bloodstone for the Midnight Suns. I will say that Midnight Suns, I think, is the one place that I could foresee Black Knight showing up. Yeah. Um, if we get a Midnight Suns, because Midnight Suns is one of those things that a lot of people 
including myself, have been talking about and wanting, uh, but nothing is confirmed. We don't know if that's happening. It's one of those things where it seems weird that they wouldn't, because now they've been introducing a bunch of characters who would fit it perfectly. Um, but I would love to see a Midnight Suns just anything at this point to be honest with you. me as well because it's like i want to see oscar isaac back on as moon knight on the big yeah. screen and it's like you have directors who would like do a great job i think like adam wingard you know yeah say what you will about like the last godzilla kong movie but it's like he feels like a perfect fit and i feel like it has that kind of star power that would make people you know actually excited compared to I don't know, like Ant Man three, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like pulling Moon Knight into Midnight Suns is a good one. Obviously, you have all the werewolf by night characters that you could pull in Elsa, him, Swamp Thing. Uh, you this could be that could be a golden opportunity to have Wong actually like lead something, yeah. because in the comics, Wong was a pretty big driving force in the most recent version of Midnight Suns, not the classic one, but he's there. And then obviously, we're gonna have Blade, who like is just built for it and maybe that's an opportunity to bring back scarlet witch she would also fit midnight suns really well uh there's a lot of people who they could just bring in and it morbius more <laughs> cross over the sony verse and bring in morbius no let's just uh let's just forget that, that that sony's universe uh exists and just leave it over in a corner by itself it knows what it did wrong uh it was madam web that's what it did wrong uh but yeah so that's basically that. We don't know where Black Knight is. Even Kit Harrington doesn't know where it is. But do you know what we do know? At least what we think we know. Uh, there's a FNAF 2 coming. I feel like that's that's a foregone conclusion. Nothing is confirmed. However, uh, Jason Blum took to social media uh, not too long ago and released this tweet. Uh, if the voice of God could put it up here real quick. Uh, he was at the Jim Henson Creature Shop and he said, quote, Jim Henson's Creature Shop is working their magic again. We aren't sure what they're working on, but we know it will be great. Anybody who has ever played a Five Nights at Freddy's game will probably immediately recognize what that guy is working on that is very clearly a uh model of mangle from five nights at freddy's 2 also peep the shirt the spring trap shirt that's pretty cool there so that is uh i feel very clearly a tease at a five nights at freddy's sequel uh voice of god can we go back to the cameras thank you uh what are your thoughts on this did you see five nights do you have any connection to that community I, I did see the first movie. I think the games, because the first one came out in like 2014. So I think I was, I'm going to show my youth here, but I, I was like in early high school. So it was kind of part. I am so sorry. But um, nothing makes me feel older because <laughs> I was like a year away from graduating college. <laughs> but like I would watch like Marker Piler play it and like a lot of those like YouTubers and everything. So I was familiar with it then. And I remember they had been working on that movie for years. And I was like, it, it seems so great, like right for like a movie. And then the movie came out and I kind of hated it. <laughs> I, that movie, I definitely feel like is one of those things where if you were not a Five Nights at Freddy's fan before going in, you probably hated it. Yeah. Uh, because everybody that I know who said that they didn't like that movie didn't know anything about the games or anything like that. Whereas everybody that I know that was a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, or at the very least understood some degree of the lore to a certain degree, which I don't know how you would be a fan and, or how you would be not a fan and know as much of the lore as that movie sort of needed you to know. Uh, but I feel like if you knew all that stuff, you walked away from it super stoked, which honestly, like it it very much felt like that was the movie that they were trying to make in the first place was they were making a movie specifically for the fans uh and so you know that seems like that might be the case with five nights too it's something that we knew was coming so this tease isn't shouldn't be a surprise to anybody no. but still it's it's pretty cool to see especially seeing that they're pulling in some characters from the second game specifically mangle who is probably the most messed up of all the animatronics to try to pull in just because oh, yeah. he is, he's been torn apart and he's all, he's all. He looks kind creepy. Of up. So even though you didn't like the first film, do you think that you'll give a second film a chance? Yeah, I, I actually do think I'll give it a chance. I just hope 
I mean, I don't think they'll do it day and date with Peacock this time because I felt like they threw a lot of money out the window, even even though it's still made that even kind of money. yeah, even with the the theatrical and streaming release, it still did really well. But I, I've even like hearing interviews with like the filmmakers and everything. They said they want to make it even kind of scarier because I think that was one of the main complaints, even from people who enjoyed the movie, was that it wasn't that scary. And if yeah. They there can, was yeah, nothing scary about that movie at all. Because I am the jumpiest person on the planet. Like, even at like, if my roommate's walking into the room and I hear the door close, I will like jump like ten feet out of my seat. So the fact that none, nothing made me jump. And I don't even like jump scares, as you can probably tell. It it, it kind of shows just how much that movie didn't even work in what it was trying to be. But, yeah. I mean, if they can improve everything and put in more, uh, was it Matthew Lillard who was the villain? Yeah. If they can put him in it even more, I, I, I'll I be there. I'll see it. I definitely feel like that is the one thing that I need the sequel to do is definitely have more Matthew Lillard. Yeah. Because, especially with that character, because he seemed to be having so much fun oh, yeah. with that part. Um, and I would be excited to see more. And I just feel like the nature of the story that they were trying to tell with the first one, it worked better to not have him in it a lot. So maybe now that they've gotten that reveal out of the way that he is uh, William Afton and he's the bad guy, now we can, you know, see more of him and we can see Springtrap show up and actually do what Springtrap is supposed to do. Uh, yeah. But, you know, we'll just have to see with that. I will say that if nothing else, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is guaranteed to, at the very least, increase the amount of Josh Hutcherson thirst trap videos that we get on our feeds, uh, because that's just going to cycle back around again. Uh, you, There was a period of time after that movie came out where doesn't matter who you are, you could not escape them. They yeah. were everywhere. They kind of came after the beekeeper as well. Oh, yeah, yeah a little bit. That got, got a little bit of a bump there, but... You know, it's what it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeremy Miller says, I had an idea of the lore. I like Josh Hutcherson, but everything felt uninteresting. And I don't know if a rating will help it if it changes. I assume that you mean like a high, like an R rating or a higher rating. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, I feel like going with like a more adult rating, like giving it like an R rating or something. I think that all that would do would hurt it from a business yes. standpoint. Because yeah. so much of its audience are younger, making it difficult for them to actually see the movie. Yeah. It, would be a problem. Because, like I said, it came out at the right time for me. And the majority of the audience for the games and for the movies is, you know, like eighth graders and ninth graders, tenth graders. Yeah. Like that age range. And I mean, even if you go into Target and you go in the toy section, they have like a whole like shelf of Five Nights at Freddy's toys. It, I I think making it R would make absolutely no sense. I could I could see them doing it, but I think that they would have to change they would have to change it enough that it wouldn't be Five Nights at Freddy's because then they'd have to be pulling in adult audiences, um, and they'd have to be bringing in people who were outside of the Five Nights fandom, which I just don't think no. that would be a smart move. Although, as Aiden Kelly pointed out. Uh, Willy's Wonderland is like Five Nights at Freddy's except yes. watchable. Um, while I'm gonna cut off that except watchable statement because I liked Five Nights at Freddy's, I thought it was perfectly watchable. Uh, Willy's Wonderland is basically like the the more like mature in air quotes uh, Five Nights at Freddy's film, and honestly, like the fact that they got that film out way faster than we got an actual Five Nights at Freddy's is uh, yeah. Pretty surprising, and, and Arrow Arrow also spoke about it. The Five Nights at Freddy's analog, Willy's Wonderland, was peak, and Nicolas Cage's performance was amazing as always. Yes. I, I the one thing about Nicolas Cage in that movie is I feel like he didn't Nicolas Cage enough. No, I mean, but even when he wasn't like, because he barely talked in that movie, if at all. But like, just the yeah. fact that he was just like chugging root beer while just playing pinball for like a good like ten minutes of that movie, I'm like. You know what? This this is perfect enough for me. That movie was just bizarre, like on its yeah. face. 
I knew exi- when I saw it, I was like, I know exactly what you're doing. You're trying to get that Five Nights at Freddy's audience watching this movie. It's fine. But then, like, outside of it, I'm just like, this is weird, and I don't know what's happening. And Nicolas Cage is just kind of standing there looking glum. I don't know. The whole thing. Uh, Arrow also said, I never played the Five Nights at Freddy's games, but I enjoyed the lore and seeing Matt Pat delivering his It's Just a Theory line. Amazing that the creators pulled him in for a cameo. Uh, there were supposed to be a couple other cameos. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that everyone has heard that Markiplier was reportedly asked to be the security guard at the beginning, but he's working on Iron Lung at the time, so he was off doing that and uh, was too busy. At least that's the reported story. I don't think I've heard anyone actually fully confirm that, but yeah, it is what it is. And then you had a whole bunch of YouTubers who could have potentially flopped in there anywhere. Uh, but you know, they're not Nick Cage. So no, no one is, though. So. That's the downside of that. Uh, and with that, that is actually where we're going to end today's show. We're going to bring things into a close. Nate, uh, I like to end the show by asking my co host if they have anything coming down the pipeline, any exciting articles or anything like that they're jazzed about that they want people to know about. So I'm going to ask you that. You have anything coming down that you want to plug? Well, I just had a review that came out today for uh, the new Park Chan Wook series, The Sympathizer, which I all I'll say is I cannot recommend that show highly enough. So be on the lookout for that. And then I also have a review coming out later this week for Leroy, Texas, which is a movie with Steve Zahn. So I feel like I haven't seen Steve Zahn in a long time. He was in Righteous Gemstones just last year. So. I don't watch Righteous Gemstones, oh, so yes, <laughs> I know it's on my list. I need to watch it. Uh, so go ahead and check those out over on Collider.com. And while you're over there, you can check out a whole bunch of stuff that Nate's worked on or any of our other talented writers and editors and all sorts of creative folk over there. They just do some fantastic work. Get over there, get yourself learned up, stay informed about entertainment news, all the goodness and nerdy stuff that you love. Uh, Nate, thank you so much for coming on today. Happy to be here. Thanks for having well, me. Yeah, we'll have to get you on another episode at some point in the future and just have, keep bringing you back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and with that, we're going to end. Uh, tomorrow is, I believe, myself and Maggie because we have an episode of X-Men to talk about. So we're going to be doing that. And then, of course, other news. But boo, boo that. We want to talk about X-Men. Uh, so tune in for that tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad place. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Bye.